Right now, I'm gonna give you the five ingredients of making a stunning photo in Photoshop. And this video is sponsored by PPA, Professional Photographers of America, the organization behind the great photography conference, Imaging USA. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, and today we're going to be looking at the five ingredients for making an absolutely delicious photograph. Let's get started right now. Number one, crop for composition. Cropping is incredibly powerful. Besides resizing an image, cropping is one of the most powerful compositional tools that we have in Photoshop. If you look at this photograph, We've got an interesting photo, but all the interesting stuff is happening here towards the middle, a little bit to the left of the photograph. This area here is not very interesting and behind him is just a bunch of empty space. So let's choose the crop tool. And if you want to choose a size, there's options at the top. You can choose different aspect ratios. And of course you can type in your own. Or if we choose original ratio, that'll keep the aspect ratio the same as when it was shot. To resize the crop, drag a corner and pull it in. Notice we're not quite getting what we want. I think a vertical crop is gonna look much better. To toggle between vertical and horizontal, tap the X key. And now we go into a vertical crop. To reposition the photograph within this crop, just click within that crop area and drag, and now we can move the photograph within that area. And just hit enter to apply. And now we have a much more interesting story. <laughs> Let's have a look at maybe changing that to a different aspect ratio. So if we go in and we change this to maybe a, let's do a square crop now. Let's drag it in, and now we're focusing more on the three faces in this area. And let's just drag this to increase the size of the crop. And notice what I'm doing is on these thirds, we're placing the important details such as the horse's head and the head of the dog on those third areas. In fact, let's do it over the eye because these are the areas that kind of draw the viewer's attention and hit enter and now we have a square crop number two don't be shy of the details let's look at recovering detail in the shadows and highlights so right now we have a pretty well exposed photograph in hawaii but our surfer here is a little bit dark and a little dull we could mask him out and brighten him but another way to do that is to do the shadow highlight now there is a shadow highlight adjustment here inside of Photoshop, but a quicker way to do it is to go into Camera Raw. So we choose Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now let's go to the Basic Panel. Now if you look in the Basic Panel, you're going to see two sliders, Highlights and Shadows. To open up those shadows, choose the Shadow Slider and move it towards the right. And notice, as I move it, it's not affecting the bright areas, it's just affecting those darker areas. So let's just go add a little bit of brightness there. And so it opened up the detail here in our surfer. Now these bright areas, if they feel too bright and you want to bring back some detail, take the highlights, move those to the left. And notice we get a lot more detail there in the uh, water. And this also works extremely well for clouds. Sometimes you might have to go back to the shadow and just touch it up to compensate. Click OK to apply. Hey everyone, I just want to quickly tell you about this event that Professional Photographers of America are putting on this January 17th through 19th. It's Imaging USA 2021 right at home. Imaging USA is the world's largest photographic conference and expo, and this year it's going to be virtual so you can enjoy it from your own home. So this is going to be three days of live educational classes and an expo. So there's going to be an opening and a closing keynote, and uh, Imaging USA always get the best speakers for these. There's going to be 80 different speakers, 100 different sessions, educational sessions, pre-conference, 
as well as a live expo where you see all the latest and hottest gear and you can talk to the vendors one-on-one -on -one, 24 7. And the best part, this is only $59 and the sessions are available for replay and the expo is open till January the 31st. So click the link in the description to register for Imaging USA 2021 right at home. And don't forget, mark your calendars January 17th through 19th. Number three, everyone likes a little seasoning. In this photograph, we have violinist Taylor Davis by the lake and these beautiful flowers. And it's just a beautiful scene, although she feels a little bit dark compared to the rest of the image. So what we want to do is we want to brighten it up, but we really want to just affect our musician here. So let's go down and choose our adjustment layer. We're going to grab our curves. And then this is the area that we want to be targeting. So to target this region, let's choose the little finger tool and we're just going to tap. And notice it adds a point to the curve. I'm going to drag this out of that well there just so we can expand the curves and this gives us more control than working in a narrower panel. Now look at, we've got these beautiful particulates in the air and uh, we don't want to lose that, but watch what happens when we brighten up this region. See, if we're brightening up our violinist, it looks great, but now we're starting to lose a little bit of this. We're losing some detail in the flowers and everything else, but don't worry about that. Let's have a look at how to fix that right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our curves and we want to hide our adjustments. We're not going to get rid of them. We're just going to hide them. So what we want to do is choose the layer mask, press control or command I, and that will invert the mask. So now it's hiding our adjustment. Now we just want to apply it to our violinist. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the background. Grab the object selection tool and then just click and drag around the area that we want to brighten up and notice this does a pretty good job of getting the selection. The nice thing about this kind of work is we don't have to be perfect with our selections. If you want to enhance it though, hold down the shift key and drag and that will add to our selection or the alt or option key and drag will take away from that selection. So there we go. Now it's starting to select it a lot better. Okay. What we want to do now is choose the layer mask. And then we want to fill this layer mask with white. Hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors, just so ours are the same. And now you can see the foreground color is white to fill with the foreground color. Hold down Alt backspace on windows, option delete on Mac. Control command D to turn off the selection. And now we've brightened up our violinist. So we're going to take the opacity and let's turn the opacity all the way down. And now we're just going to bring it up just to where we're brightening it, but not making it look unnaturally bright. Right now we're at about 58%. Number four, a little vignette. Here we have a beautiful golden sunset. It's a nice peaceful image. And in this case, What's really going to give this a boost is adding a vignette around the edges. It's going to match the shadow in the middle of the silhouette. So rather than try to figure out how to do a vignette in Photoshop, we just simply go under the filter and we'll go into camera raw filter. This actually has the best vignettes inside of Photoshop. So go down to the bottom of the adjustments panel and you'll see effects. When you open effects, you're going to see grain and vignetting. So take the vignette and push it to the left. Notice it darkens those edges down. Let's pull it quite far. Now there's some options available. You'll see these under the little arrow. And now we can change the feather, which will soften it less or more to just blend it in, which I think I want to make this one quite soft. Then we can change the midpoint so we can bring it into more towards the center or make the vignette a little bit smaller and just darken the edges. 
And I think that looks pretty nice. And simply, let's have a look at it. Before and after. Now, a vignette doesn't work on every photograph and shouldn't be applied to every photograph. But on the right image, it can just really bring it to life. Number five, don't forget to sharpen, but be selective. Here's a nice slow exposure of a stream. And we want to add a little bit of sharpening because the whole image is a little soft, but we don't want to sharpen this beautiful flow. We want to sharpen the rocks and actually that's going to add a really nice counterpoint to the softness of the rest of the image. So we want to apply a partial sharpening. And by the way, I did a dodge and burn adjustment on this image. Check out some of my other videos where you'll learn how to do dodging and burning. I've got plenty of tutorials on those. All right, so what I want to do is I want to apply sharpening selectively to this. So what I want to do is create a new layer on top, which consists of both of these layers underneath. Also known as a stamp visible. Hold down Shift, Option, Command on Mac. And that would be Shift, Alt, Control on Windows. While holding down those three modifiers, tap the E key. And this will give us a layer on top, which consists of everything of the entire image without flattening it underneath. Now we're going to use a high pass sharpening technique. So what we're going to do is change this to an overlay blend mode. Now we're going to go up under filter and under the filter, we're going to choose other high pass. And with this high pass, we can adjust how much sharpening we want to apply. Let's watch the moss on the rocks. So as I increase this, notice it really brings out the sharpness in these areas of the image. See that? Looks nice on the rocks, but it starts to increase the grain and stuff here and it doesn't look good there. So we want to selectively apply this. Let's do that now. Click OK to apply the sharpening. And if we look at it before and after, you can see, yep, it's definitely doing its job. So I want to hide that in those other areas. So what we're going to do is hold down the Alt or the Option key and then click on New Layer Mask. And what this does is it creates an inverted mask, which hides everything. With the mask still selected, all we need to do now is paint with white to paint in the sharpening. So let's hit the D key to reset the colors and that gives us white as the foreground color. Let's choose a brush. And we want a soft edge brush. I'm going to bring that size down a little bit. And by the way, the left and right bracket keys will change the brush size. And let's Turn the opacity and the flow up really high up to 100 just so you can see what's going on. Sometimes you might work with a smaller amount and just selectively paint and sharpening in some parts of the image that you don't want to sharpen fully. In this case, we'll sharpen fully. So let's just paint. Notice as I paint on this rock, see how we're painting in the sharpness. Same as here. So now you can control exactly where you want to sharpen the image. Apply it to these rocks, looks very nice. Front face of this rock. And see what we're doing, we're just sharpening those areas. Maybe in the foreground here, I'd like that nice and sharp. And now if we look at this before and after, notice the areas that we care about, these rocks, look at this rock on the foreground. See how now that gets the sharpening and it's not affecting the water or the rest of the image. This also works really well when you're working with portraits where you don't want to sharpen the skin tones, but you might want to sharpen some of the accessories or jewelry. So I'm curious, which one of those five ingredients was your favorite? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Great to have you with us. Hit that subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And by the way, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.